Welcome everyone to another episode of Spill the Tea, the show that interviews guests that will help everyone make their post-secondary plans. I'm your host, Keisha, and today we have a very special guest for one of the programs that I truly love and I'm looking forward to learning more about, and that's QuestBridge. And today joining us, we have Dr. Christian Martell, the Director of Student Recruitment for QuestBridge, and she's going to spill a little tea on all things QuestBridge today. How are you doing, Christian? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me here, Keisha. I am glad that you are participating. We have so many worthy students that would really benefit from this program, but you know, they don't really know about it. And it's really great to hear it from someone that has the tea on it. So why don't we go ahead and get started with, tell us what, what is QuestBridge? Yeah, absolutely. So QuestBridge is a national nonprofit. We help uh, really connect high achieving low income students to some of the top colleges in the country. And we support them through, um, you know, getting into college, graduating from that college, and then even beyond college. Um, we've been around for a while. We've been around since 1994. And in that time, we've served around 96,000 students through all of our various programs. And um, my personal stat that I always love to share is that, you know, we currently actually serve around 20,000 scholars and alumni globally. So uh, we're really excited by the work we've been able to do since we've uh, we were founded back in 1984. That's awesome. I didn't even realize it had been around for so long. So, man, why wasn't it around when I was going? I probably wouldn't have qualified <laughs> anyway, but it's all good. <laughs> so with that in mind, knowing that I wouldn't benefit, what students would benefit from this program? Yeah, absolutely. So um, specifically, we, we have two programs for high school students, but our premier program is the National College Match. And I would say that uh, for that program, we look for high school seniors who have shown sort of outstanding academic ability um, and, you know, come from uh, sort of financial challenge backgrounds, right? So we take a holistic approach to our review of applications. Um, we don't have absolute cutoffs, but many of our students are the type of students that are earning primarily AIDS in some of the most challenging courses available to them. Um, and many of them do come from uh, households that have around 65000 or less income and very minimal assets. Um, and while it's not a requirement to be first generation, uh, I would say somewhere between 70 to 80% of our students actually typically are first generation college students. Wow. It's a great way to, to get them started because I know, you know, working with a lot of those students, first generation, they don't really, they, they start to wonder, can I truly afford to go to school? And, you know, some of the schools that are listed with QuestBridge are amazing. And for those of you that haven't checked it out yet, take a look. We're talking Ivy League. We're, we're talking some incredible um, liberal arts schools. It's just such a great list that some of these students may not have have even thought that they'd be eligible to apply for them. So, you know, okay, they apply to QuestBridge, right? They they have to do an application pro process. What, you know, it, what kind of students are going to get accepted to this program? Like, you know, and, and I know you called it the national match. Am I correct? Yep, the national college match. Yep. Yeah, explain that to them. <laughs> yeah, so the National College Match is a both a college admission and a scholarship process. So it's it's built into the one application that students fill out. Um, the application typically opens up in late summer and you know is due somewhere at the end of September. Um, but really, students that go through this process and submit that application um, can be admitted early uh, with a full four year scholarship to any of our fifty college partners. So as you mentioned, we have uh, a whole list of some of the top colleges in the country. Um, schools like Amherst and Duke and Vanderbilt and Yale, uh, among many others. And so the, the application, once it's submitted in late September, we review that application. And in mid-October, we let finalists know. So QuestBridge reviews and selects the finalists. And we let them know that they can participate in um, what is truly a unique thing for us, which is uh, the match scholarship, right? And so with this process, students get to rank up to 15 schools. Uh, of which they want to be considered for admission and for this match scholarship. So once they do that, there might be some additional sort of match requirements that they might need to submit, um, some supplemental essays, some uh, perhaps financial information that they need to submit. Um, but if they do all of that, they're considered at up to 
15 of these schools, you know, using this free application. And uh, on December 1st, we let them know whether or not those finalists who ranked those schools matched. And so to match is to uh, be paired kind of with the, the highest ranked school on your list that wants to offer you a full four-year scholarship to attend. Uh, so, you know, for a lot of these students on after December 1st, they know exactly where they're going to school next fall. And they know that they're going to school without you know, with a very generous financial aid offer that um, has no parent uh, contribution and has no loans attached to it, which, which is just a great deal. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. And, you know, since it comes on December 1st, I mean, if you celebrate Christmas, now that is a Christmas <laughs> gift right there. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, all of it all rolled up into one, baby. I'm getting in. I, I love how you mentioned the schools and you just went, and Yale, no big deal. No big deal. No, no big deal. And really, it's not a big deal for a lot of these students. And and you guys don't realize that, you know, if you are a high achieving student, why not go for it? And speaking of going for it. So let's say they go for it and they get matched. What next? What? what tell me about getting matched. What what happens? Yeah, yeah. So again, um, kind of takes the, the anxiety out of that senior year, right? You know, by December 1st that you have the match, you have this full four-year scholarship, this acceptance to hopefully what is one of your many dream schools on your rankings list that you provided. And so um, you know where you're going. There's a mid-year report, just turning in your grades about halfway through, but really you're there, you're in, um, and that's all you really need to worry about, right? You start to kind of transition mentally into thinking about being on campus and what you might need. Um, but I do want to say the match is a binding commitment. So mm -hmm. what that means is um, that you are fully committed to attending that school. And in turn, that school is fully committed to giving you that match scholarship. Um, so for those students that, you know, do match, they know where they're going, um, and they're committed to going there in the fall, and that school is committed to giving them that scholarship. Um, that being said, the scholarship itself, the match scholarship, is a highly selective process within a very selective admissions process, right? So mm -hmm. in fact, many of our students who end up in our programs um, and end up at our college partners aren't match scholarship recipients, and that's okay. They go through other options. Um, so that's one of the beauties of the National College Match. It does provide students with multiple uh, admissions opportunities. So if you don't match on December 1st, it's not the end of the road. Road. It's not the end of the day okay. for you. It does not mean a rejection. <laughs> um, it means you weren't considered for that scholarship. But love that. All the positivity. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a failure, kids. It's, no. not a failure. it's just a different route to get yes. to where you want to go. That's all. <laughs> yes. Um, and in fact, I would say like most people end up doing regular decisions. So you're you're just in time with most students at that point, right? Um, yeah. Because the match is pretty early on. So right. um, so you get to participate. Uh, usually if you rank schools, a lot of schools will give you the option of doing uh, other early admissions mm -hmm. uh, opportunities. And so um, you should check, you know, we have it all on our website, but you can check to see if that's a possibility for some of the other schools on your rank list. And if not, you can participate in Quest Ridge regular decision. And so that means that you could apply to any of our 50 college partners for free and be considered for admission um, and still receive very generous financial aid because all of our partners are truly committed to um, having sort of a, a socially economically diverse class. Mm -hmm. And so they are able to provide uh, generous financial aid, whether or not it's through the match scholarship. Um, so, you know, most of our students who end up at our college partners are getting in through these other either early option or regular decision opportunities that we provide. That is amazing. It, it's amazing. I, I'm so, I'm always amazed when you know, you hear programs like this, especially with some of the top schools that you're mentioning. And, you know, I mean, with, with our current state of affairs, it's nice to know that these schools, no matter what, they're in it. They're looking, they're looking to help out those students that deserve to be there and, you know, having a diver diverse campus. So speaking about some diversity, you know, um, I'm based out of Orange County in Florida. So we do have quite a few students that may not necessarily be uh, eligible for FAFSA just yet. Is there, can they still apply? Can they still be eligible for this program? 
Yeah, absolutely. So for the Quest Bridge application itself, we actually only take self-reported financial information. And so when you're filling out our application, we're not asking that you're completing the FAFSA or um, oftentimes later on our, our college partners will ask for the FAFSA uh, when it is available this year, you know, later on in December. Um, many of them will ask for a thing called the CSS profile, which is kind of like the FAFSA, um, but for private financial aid. And so there are documents that will be required later on of finalists as they go through the process. But for our application, they are self-reporting their financial information. So we ask them to use things like um, you know, W-2s if they're available, uh, other kind of tax documents. Um, if that's not available, then obviously, you know, paychecks and, and other things that you can use. Um, that being said, usually when we get this question, we know that it's from students who uh, may not be able to fill out the FAFSA, right? right? Because right. they don't have a social security number. They, um, they might have a different citizenship status. And so I just want to be very clear that we do consider any student, regardless of citizenship status, who attends a high school in the U.S. for our program. So that means, you know, undocumented students, refugees, asylum seekers, international students that are studying in a high school in the U.S., they are all eligible to apply to our programs. And for the, ma for the match in particular, I will say that, you know, there are some schools that will not consider um, uh, students that are not U.S. citizens or uh, are international, right? And so, um, you know, we have a full list of those, but it's a handful of the 50 schools for, for either of those. That's amazing. Thank you so much for covering that. And, you know, we do have quite a few students that get worried about that stuff. So this is a great option for them. So, you know, I know we, we've talked on the side before and uh, we talked about what your experience was as a student looking at Questbridge. Can you tell the students a little bit about it so that they can get, they can get another perspective on things? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I I was a high achieving low income student myself back in the day, and um, I actually got a mailer from Questbridge, and I looked at it and I reviewed it, and I did. I thought it was too good to be true. I thought it was a scam. Um, and I remember at the time, you know, talking to other friends who were also in some of my classes, and um, you know, talking to my counselor, and no one kind of knew about it. So I'm originally from South Texas, and. Uh, very few people in my community go to schools, uh, even within the same state, right? <laughs> so, um, so it's really hard, right? Uh, it's a small group that even ends up going to places like, you know, five hours away within Texas. And so, um, let alone going outside of Texas for, for college. And so I kind of just disregarded the mailer and, and thought it was a scam. And so um, I actually did end up going to one of our college partners eventually. And so it wasn't until I was a college student that I realized, oh, Questbridge is real. It is, <laughs> it is actually legitimate and people- Darn it, I missed it. <laughs> yes, and I missed this great opportunity. And I think um, for me, what I, what I came to learn, what I came to appreciate at that time, and even obviously now in my role is that um, it's not just about you know, getting into college, right? I'm a good, I'm a good representation of like, you're able to get into college, right? But through Questbridge, you have a built-in community uh, once you get to that campus, right? So whereas I had to kind of scrounge and like find friends and, you know, find people with my shared background, um, you know, Questies, they get on campus and they have that group that they're able to connect with. They have that built-in community. Um, and then once they're there, right? They're being supported through programming, through this group, um, in order to graduate, right? So it's not just about getting in. You also have to get that college degree. Right, right. right. Um, and so, you know, they're supported throughout college and then even beyond, right? So I had to go through that process and um, graduate from college, which was great, um, but then still had to find a community after college, right? And so for, for again, for our, our Questbridge scholars, uh, when they become alumni, they get to join our alumni association, uh, wherever they move, they might find other Questbridge uh, alums to also connect with and, um, you know, get hooked up with, with jobs and other opportunities after you graduate. And so um, I think it's one of those things where kind of once you're in the Questbridge family, you're sort of Questbridge for life, right? And so I, I definitely think that's one of the, the biggest benefits of doing the program. And again, wish I would have not thrown away that mailer and actually applied. Right. <laughs> It's kind of like being in your own fraternity or sorority. You just chose, I don't want to pledge. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> 
So, okay, you know, we're we're going through so much information. And for those of you watching, of course, you know, there may be some other questions that's going to come up. So we're actually splitting our episode, chit-chatting with each other, into two different episodes. So this one, now you've heard about what QuestBridge is. The next episode, episode two of QuestBridge, is going to be more about the process. How do you apply? What that entails? What you'll be going through during that time? So just stay tuned for the second episode. But for now, we've gotten to that part of the show that is basically, Christian, we, we need some tea, man. Get my people, the insiders, you know, just a little tidbit to help them figure things out. What What's some tips, you know, get, like I said, spill the tea, Christian, spill the tea. I'm going to take a drink myself, actually. Yes, please do. I love it. And if y'all didn't notice, she's got her Quest Bridge mug, girl. She knew this. <laughs> she knew the assignment. She was ready for us today. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I think students really, when they're considering applying to college, they've made that decision for themselves. There are so many ways you could apply to college, right? Um, QuestBridge is, is one option in a sea of options to apply to college. Um, so I definitely encourage, first and foremost, for students to just weigh all of their options, right? If QuestBridge seems like it's good for you, great. If not, there are other ways for you to get to college, right? Um, but really, I think what, again, what makes QuestBridge unique I will say in terms of an application um, is that match component. And so, you know, you're thinking about whether or not you want to do QuestBridge. Um, if it sounds like the match is, is for you, right? It's the only opportunity that you have out there to be able to apply early um, to up to 50 colleges, right? And to be able to apply early, you know, not just get admitted, but get admitted with that guaranteed full four-year scholarship. Um, that's going to give you no loans, no parent contribution, right? And so that, that scholarship is covering your tuition, it's covering um, housing and food, it's covering books, um, travel to and from the campus, right? So, you know, all of those extras are being covered. And so you can go to college with that peace of mind, with your family's peace of mind, um, that you can afford to be there, right? And so yeah. it's a really, it's a really great option. And then plus, you know, if you go to one of our college partners with this match scholarship or with uh, through regular decision, you're you're being admitted to this Pestridge family, right? You have this host of uh, resources and programming and that community kind of built into your college experience and beyond. So um, I do think it's a it's a really great option and and one of many to get you in and through college. So if you guys didn't catch that, because there's there's a spot. She said it really cool. I like that, Christian. You're like, you know, look you get that full scholarship, you know, you're getting, <laughs> you're getting food and, and room uh, eight for the older ones, room and board, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, but that, that little tidbit you may not have heard travel home and back. Now mm -hmm. there's a lot of scholarships that you get. People will say, Oh yeah, it's a full scholarship. No, no. <laughs> when you hear this, that's a full scholarship where it helps you get to and from. And those are the little things that a lot of students just, they don't get, they don't understand how amazing that is. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And thank you for being a part of episode one of QuestBridge. Uh, just know that in episode two, uh, I don't know, you, you may notice, but we'll be looking the same way. We're just splitting it up so that you can take this in chunks, people. We don't want to. We don't want to uh, overwhelm you. But QuestBridge is such an amazing program, and I am thankful that you are with us, Christian, so that we can give them the a little bit of tea on what's up. And like I said, in next episode, we're going over your application process and everything. So you guys might want to get ready to take some notes or keep rewinding when you watch this. And speaking of which, if you like what you see, go ahead and like the show and, and let us know what's up. But Christian, for now, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you guys for watching the show. See you in the next episode of Spill the Tea. Bye. <laughs>